Hey soldiers, the perfect economic storm is brewing. It's going to literally sink the economic ships, as it were, of many millions of Americans. Now, we need to be able to look out on the horizon and see what's going on, forecast it. What are we seeing? We're seeing rising interest rates at a time where we have high inflation. And I'm going to show you how this is going to hurt many millions of Americans. And we're going to talk about how they need to act now. Tell your friends and family to watch this video, how they need to act, what they need to consider doing in order to not only survive this storm, but to sail through it and thrive. We're also going to talk about Elizabeth Warren and some of the other senators and a piece of legislation that they came up with that they think is going to help this situation, but it's actually going to take millions of middle-class Americans and take them out of that status and prevent them from reaching economic and financial independence. Stop helping. All right, as I said in the intro, rising interest rates, you know, the Federal Reserve is increasing these interest rates. And we've also, we're also dealing with the high inflation. Now, there's a speculation that Jerome Powell, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, is not doing enough in terms of being aggressive and increasing these rates, aggressive enough to slow this thing down. Be that as it may, I don't know. I'm not a Fed Chair. I tend to agree with that sentiment. But we have a situation now where money is more expensive. So it's more expensive to borrow money now that the Fed has raised rates. Businesses are exposed to this. And to the extent that borrowing costs are more ex expensive, then businesses tend to pass expenses on to us, the consumer, the client, in order to maintain some semblance of a profit margin. So that results in higher inflation, prices going up. We've already got tons of pressures on the economy that is that are leading to inflation. We got this fuel situation. I know a lot of people are saying, well, fuel has dropped. It hasn't dropped to where it was in 2020. Okay, don't get comfortable with uh, gas above $4. Let's not get comfortable with that. Uh, so we got those transportation costs. We've got shortages of grains and things like that. I did a, you can go look at the community page I posted uh, the other day about how a bag of Doritos, they, they had a special at the supermarket, two bags for $9. Okay. And that special used to be last year was two bags for $7. So we've noticed uh, quite an increase, uh, near a 30% increase for that item. Now, what this has caused is a lot of Americans to rely on credit because as we've seen before in this chart, the wages have not kept up with inflation and there's a tremendous gap between these two numbers. So as prices rise and wages stay stagnant for the most part, Americans are trying to fill that gap with credit. Now, Here's where it gets dangerous. And this is why I'm talking to you about the perfect storm, because as interest rates rise, these revolving credit lines are exposed to higher interest rates, thereby making things even more expensive. Americans loaded up on $40 billion more in debt in June. Fed says Americans piled on $40.1 billion worth of debt in June. The Federal Reserve said Friday afternoon the figure was considerably higher than economists forecast after May's revised total of $23.8 billion. Americans' borrowing grew by 10.5% in June compared to 6.3% in May, according to the Fed's G19 Consumer Credit Report. Revolving debt, roughly a proxy for outstanding, outstanding credit card balances, rose by 16% after a 7.8% increase in May. So what we're seeing there is, again, a reflection of the difference between wages and inflation. Uh, I can tell you that with regard to this household, $70 is the new $40 at the grocery store. And again, uh, if you've got a family of four, well, you got uh, the husband, wife, 2.5 kids, a dog, because the dog's got to eat too. Uh, then you've really been impacted by this. So it's no uh, 
it's no secret that people are breaking out these revolving lines of credit, uh, the uh, credit cards. But even non-revolving debt, which includes loans like cars, uh, car loans, student loans, that grew by 8.8% after a 5.8% increase in May. These figures exclude mortgage balances, which represent most of the debt carried by households. On a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis, Americans borrowed an additional $98.9 billion, the Fed says. Friday's report comes on the heels of a separate release from the New York Fed that reported Americans' non-housing related debt ballooned to $103 billion in the second quarter. All right, so we're going to come up with our own solutions to this. Uh, I want to talk to you briefly about the so-called solution that Elizabeth Warren and some other senators, including Jack Reed from Rhode Island, uh, Sheldon Whitehouse, also uh, from Rhode Island, um, Bernie Sanders, of course, and Jeff Merkley from Oregon. They all have gotten together and have uh, sponsored a bill. They did this a while back, but the bill is still out there. And the bill is designed to introduce uh, or to shield, rather, Americans from sky-high credit card rates. It sounds good, right? But how do they uh, intend to do that? Anytime you hear government getting involved in the goings-on of a private company, it's usually bad news. Somebody's going to get hurt, and it's probably not going to be the politician, and it ain't going to be the company. It's going to be the middle class. It's going to be the poor. And this is no different. So those senators have gotten together and they said they, they, they're calling this act. Of course, they always name it something that, uh, the, the, uh, care for puppies and, uh, inf infant children act. Who could be against that, right? The empowering states rights to protect consumers act would restore states ability to limit consumer loan interest rates for their residents and help address the over $850 billion that Americans hold in credit card debt. Now, look, I'm all for being responsible here. I had a credit card in college and I, I shouldn't have had it because I ran it up like most college students do. And it took me years to get out of that debt because I wasn't making any money. I had no business with a credit card. Uh, I have since, since that time, of course, learned to be responsible uh, with that type of credit. Now, some people out there say that you shouldn't have a credit card. And I say, no, that's not true. You should be an adult and you should be disciplined. Uh, and there was a time where I was not, okay, with regard to that. And I'll put that on me, okay? Um, there's no way somebody's going to hand you free money. And that's how we acted. That's how I acted in college. Uh, so there is uh, a responsibility that we, the end user, need to accept. And I know that that is so not in vogue these days. Everybody else is the blame. But I know that sentiment does not exist here among the soldiers of finance. Now, if you're not a soldier, go ahead, hit that subscribe button uh, and become a soldier of finance. Rhode Islanders are feeling a big hit to their wallets from corporate profiteering and inflation. They're always blaming the corporations, okay? Now, what if these corporations said, you know what? We're tired of being castigated. We're just going to close our doors. Think about how many employees would lose their jobs. Think about how many consumers would be negatively impacted. Uh... So they're tired of corporate profiteering and inflation, driving some to take on credit card debt to lighten the burden, said Senator Whitehouse. Now, let me tell you something about him. Let me get to this. This bill will empower individual states like Rhode Island to rein in runaway credit card rates and protect their citizens from Wall Street greed. Now, Senator Whitehouse had an opportunity to push the moratorium on the gas tax. OK, whatever happened to that on the federal gas tax? But it's the corporations that are greedy, right? Everybody greedy except for him. Now, he could have done something. He could be out there on CNN and MSNBC and Fox and whatever else. He could be out there with a bullhorn in front of the U.S. Capitol, uh, shaming his fellow uh, senators into voting to give the American public some relief. But um, I have not seen him do that. So giant banks and predatory lenders have exploited loophole after loophole. We talked about this in the last video. There are no loopholes. There are laws. And this guy is a lawmaker. Okay. Well, actually, this is Elizabeth Warren. Oh, no. This is Sanders saying that. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. It is Elizabeth Warren. Giant banks and predatory lenders have exploited loophole after loophole. No, ma'am. You write the laws. You know these aren't loopholes. You know they are uh, provisions within the law. 
And uh, she's saying that these loopholes saddle families with outrageous interest rates and fees. I'm glad to be reintroducing this legislation to restore states' ability to protect the citizens. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, here's the problem. If this were to pass, you would see these credit card companies, these lenders, change their tactics so that they're going for uh, just servicing a higher credit profile clientele, all right, uh, because they want to be assured that they're going to uh, be able to get their money back once they extend the credit. Now, I always say the high interest credit, that's a dangerous it's a dangerous uh, allocation or a dangerous pot of money because if you don't pay that credit card off in the 30-day cycle, of course, you're going to be exposed to, on average, about 16% of uh, interest payments. And so just think about whatever you bought at inflated prices and add another 16% onto that if you can't pay it off in the 30-day cycle. Okay, so this is why we... We don't need these senators to take care of this for us. We can do it ourselves. Now, the bill is stalled. Um, hasn't Nothing really has happened with it, which tells you how serious they are about it because they have had the Senate and the House and the White House. They Why haven't they moved upon this? Okay, let me tell you why they haven't moved upon it. Because they know that their donors are Visa, American Express, the big banks. They know this. So they're also saying that this would help them come after predatory lenders like payday lenders. Now, I will say this. To the extent that um, you can avoid payday lending, please avoid that. I almost had to do that when I was very young and I had just moved out. And um, a situation developed where I did not have to. And I'm glad I didn't, okay? Because you want to talk about some onerous interest rates. Uh, that's the territory that you're kind of getting into. And it, it gets you into a hamster wheel that... It take a lot of effort to get off. Okay. So to those out there who may be considering that, see if there are any other alternatives to help you uh, temporarily before you have to pull that trigger. Now let's talk about some ways that you can thrive through the situation and protect yourself from this perfect storm. Now, if you got one of those credit cards, you need to pay that bad boy down ASAP. Okay, start paying not just the interest, because I know they send you every month, they send you that attractive minimum payment due, and uh, they love that. They, they love that, because when you do that, again, now you're paying them, on average, 16% more. So you need to, if they say the minimum payment, let's just say for argument, $20, you need to consider paying them $100. Eat up that principal, get that debt down. Start to uh, start to uh, be less exposed to high interest rates. Now, I always proceed from the uh, from the philosophy of you can ask. I can ask a question, and the answer is up to the person I'm asking. Okay, so call your credit card company, see if they can reduce your interest rate. Okay. I don't know. Maybe you've been just the perfect uh, customer or maybe you are somebody that pays that uh, credit card off in the 30 day cycle and you have been doing that for years. So they ain't making no money off of you. Maybe they'll look at it like, well, if we reduce his interest rate, maybe he's um, he or she is trying to go out there and make a big purchase with this card. OK, let, let's do that. And maybe you can drop some language in there to maybe give them that impression. OK, see if they can drop that interest rate for you. All right. So. That's always, and again, you can ask. When I was but a lad, a young buck, uh, my philosophy with the pretty young ladies was, I can ask. And if they don't want to go out on a date, they'll say no. Uh, so ask. Consider a credit card balance transfer. Now, if you can transfer um, a relatively high interest rate balance to a zero uh, interest rate introductory offer or some lower rate introductory offer that's going to allow you, you know, to knock that down and experience a lower rate over a year, then that'd be perfect because that will then allow you to have the much lower or maybe 0% interest rate while you knock out that, uh, while you knock out that principal, while you knock out that debt. Don't sit there and again, rely on that minimum payment. Go ahead and knock that debt out 
while you can. And the zero balance transfer or low balance transfer could be just the thing you're looking for. Here's one that I use. Get a cash back card if you don't travel much, okay? Now, I know a lot of people may be in a situation since 2020. They might be traveling a lot less. So, they're not racking up the miles on those uh, frequent flyer, you know, those types of, car of uh, cards. The rewards for travel cards typically have good redemption rates, but that might not be worth it if you don't plan to travel much in the next year. Plus, they typically come with an annual fee, and you should try to avoid that annual fee also. Keep as much money in your pocket as you possibly can. If you're focused on making ends meet, a cash back rewards card might be a better option. These cards don't have a lot of perks, but they typically offer 2 to 5% cash back on spending on essential shopping categories like groceries and gas. These cards are great. They are a great way to offset some of the cost of inflation. Now, another thing you might want to consider uh, with one of these types of cards, these cashback cards, I have a cashback card that allows me to uh, put the rewards, the cash rewards into my health savings account. Okay. So I just funnel that. I don't spend it. I funnel those rewards right over into increasing my assets. All right, let me hit you with one more before we get out of here. Do a subscription audit of your credit card expenses. Nearly 90% of consumers underestimate the money they spend on subscriptions, often by hundreds of dollars, according to a 2021 survey from consulting firm West Monroe. That's why you want to do a regular subscription audit on your credit cards at least once a year. It's easy to do. Examine your credit card statements going back a few months and identify recurring expenses you've either forgotten about or do not need. This could include subscriptions to television streaming services or iPhone apps, whatever it is, you can cancel those subscriptions and save money. So there's some practical um, tips for you to, again, thrive through this perfect storm situation that is brewing. Now, okay, watch this video. It's about how Bernie Sanders is mocking the Biden Inflation Reduction Act. Now, he's doing that because he knows that it's not going to reduce inflation. We talk about how to thrive through that situation on that video. So go ahead and watch it. And guys, I'll talk to you soon.